Hey all, thanks for joining. Uh, today I'm going to go through creating a function to query users on Windows in PowerShell. Um, I haven't found a PowerShell commandlet that I liked um, that returns the object in a clean way. I do like the output from the command query user built into Windows, but like I said, um, it, it doesn't really return it in a usable format in PowerShell. So if you look here, query user uh, returns kind of a uh, space delimited object or text output. Um, so what we're going to do is take that, turn that into a PowerShell object, and um, doing that with a PowerShell function. So learn a few things hopefully here, and uh, hopefully it'll be useful for, for you guys as well. Um, so bear with me here, we're going to start typing it up. parameters. Uh, one is computer name. Uh, default value. Um, I like to provide the uh, types here. Not always necessary, but it definitely gives it a more readable format. Um, so we want to query active users. Um, console users and disconnected. We don't want to be able to use active and disconnected at the same time, so I'm going to do a parameter tag or attribute tag um, with a set name active. And we're also going to do one for disconnected. So that's basically going to say that active and disconnected cannot be used together, but they can be used with console or computer name. Um, so the meat of this uh, function is going to be uh, right here. So we're going to use our command that we um, ran down here, which is query user. I use the shorthand ampersand to run commands typically, um, especially ones like this. Uh, the way you do that is just do ampersand quote the command um, and then you start doing outside the quotes your um, arguments that you're going to pass in. So it's query user. We're going to pass a server for a computer name. Um, the computer name. So as you can see here, I'll just quickly demonstrate the options here. So if you provide, oops, sorry slash server, you can actually query remote scene uh, servers for users. Um, to clean this up, the first thing we got to do is remove the header. I'm going to use that just tack replace, so this is a string replace in PowerShell, and then you can use uh, regex to do a replacement. So the first value is just white space right here in front, and then it's followed by multiple spaces um, I'm sorry, username, multiple spaces, and then session name. So it's pretty unique. I don't think any other output for these can ever be that. So we're just going to stick to that. So from the beginning of the line, one space, username, and then we're going to do white space as well. And there's going to be one or more session name, and then um, dot star all the way to the end of the line. And we're going to replace that with nothing. Uh, next thing we want to do is replace um, all the results in here, um, all the white space in the results uh, with a comma. So basically it's going to turn the results into a CSV and then we can take that and pipe the string or the rows from the string into uh, convert from CSV. So I'll show you that here in a second. But let's start with replacing white space with commas. So it's going to be two or more. So basically that's going to do everything but these first single white space areas. This uh, greater than sign or right arrow is just pointing to the user you're logged in with. Um, I usually don't use that. Um, and if I wanted to know my current user, I would use the environment variable env username. Uh, it returns the same thing. So I'm also going to just replace that, removing it. So replace the right arrow with nothing. And yeah, 
show you what that looks like, just that first line. And as you can see, I forgot the comma. So let's do it again. And it turned it into basically CSV. Um, it would also do this for each line or each user that was connected to the system. Um, with query user, if there's multiple users, like on a remote desktop server, the session name will be like RDP, hashtag, and then um, a, a session number. Um, it also sees all other disconnected sessions. So you'll see all the users that were logged in or are, are logged in currently. And we have to now convert that from CSV into a PowerShell custom object. So we're gonna use built-in convert from CSV delimiter. We made them commas. And we're also gonna provide a cleaned up header since we removed it using the same values in title case. Session name, states, So running that, you should see, scroll down here, clear out, oh, got to call it get user session, parameter set cannot be resolved, what do we do here, parameter set name, so hit must have to have one of those potentially. Is that what it's looking for? Yeah, it is. Um, we can clean that up later. Could actually maybe not set this one. No, I think we do. I'll come back to that rethink in a bit, but for now, we'll just either query active or disconnected. Not a big deal. I'm sure there's a better way to implement those parameter set names. So from here, uh, I'll go ahead and I, I do want to add the computer name to the object that's returned in case you query a remote user. It's kind of nice to have that information. So let's quick, quickly remote, uh, loop through those and add the property to the PowerShell custom object. All right, so that basically just tacks on to the end here, the computer name. Uh, we'll go ahead and check if we're active. Else if disconnected. So this is where we're gonna filter based off of these switches. Um, if console. All right, so sessions, and we're just gonna do a where object here. So from our sessions, so for active, I'm just gonna off of the state property that we created. So if it equals active, you can see here current session active. And we'll do the same as well as disconnected. We don't have one as an example here, but I do know it's DISC as the state value. And then if the console, we're just going to narrow it down. If you say console, it's only going to return one console session. Um, so we'll run this and try our dip different options. Yeah, so we get active console users, disconnected console, nothing because there is no disconnected console session, um, just console. Uh, it requires at least active or disconnected. So again, this is probably not the best configuration for parameter set names. Let's see what happens if we do that. It does take just console now. It does take both of those. OK, 
can I use disconnected? Let's take active disconnected. So what I was trying to do is just limit these two. Uh, but we'll have to rethink that. Not the big picture here. Just remove it for now. Um, it will slim down your results based on what you specify as an option. Um, and I can add the changes to GitHub. So I'll upload this. Hopefully this is useful for you as well. Um, have a good day. Thanks. All right. Just to quickly uh, revisit this earlier, I had some issues with the parameter set names. So went through that and revisited uh, and added the default parameter set name, which applies that to all of them and then also separates active and disconnected using these parameter set names. Um, so uh, what that gives you then is all the ones that have defaults and a parameter set name um, would be used together, but disconnected and active won't be used together. Uh, so you, you can run it here, get error if you use them both, and if you don't, you don't get an error. Um, so like I said, I'll upload this to GitHub and you can use it and have a good day, thanks.